Okay, so the irony step, really, you're going to know going into it before, or kind of, and you're just going to see if they can be utilized correctly at that point. Yes. Okay. Um, okay let's go to page three. Yeah, that's the IRB. So, yeah, usually there's a portal. IRB. For most central IRBs, you know, like most sites use central IRBs. Right. So, there's like a portal. And at these portals, sites can go in there. They have access, like the coordinator has access, CRC, CRA, sponsor. Like they all have access. So when IRB amends a protocol, okay. and it goes there. The sponsor will get it, send it out to the sites because it's that important to where yeah. they want to actively send it out. As opposed to like, uh, let's say, an updated IRB member roster. Okay. Like they, they update their the Office of Human Research Protections uh, overseas IRBs. Yeah, I think I saw that roster in one of the yep. writers. So yeah. those are important and they get updated, but that's not as important as like a protocol amendment. So that will be passively like sitting there. Okay. SUSAR letters also are important. They go out to the sites. You know what's a SUSAR? Yeah. 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 So, <clears throat> like, not every SAE is a SUSAR, but some make it yeah. for that status. So when you do a site, you use this form to kind of give you guidance, because you could have one file, you're gonna have, yeah, yeah. This, you, or you could have eight files, depending, right? So you just got to kind of see what time you have and yes. how much you can dig into. And that? what your focus is on. Yeah. What's your area of focus? Okay. What's the monitoring plan? Okay, like, you'll know the monitoring plan before the study. When they do the um, CRA training for the study, the, it's called a kickoff meeting. Yeah. And so they'll do that with the CRAs. Okay. They're going to tell you what the monitoring plan is. This is traditional monitoring, okay. which is 100% SDV. Okay. Meaning every single piece of data is looked at and yeah. verified. And SDR. SDR is constantly right. in there. Yeah. Okay. Or is it risk based monitoring? Which we're not seeing that many risk based monitoring studies, but there are out there. RBM. Yeah. And they don't have 100% SDB. You know, they, and every site is monitored differently with the risk-based monitoring based on the site's risk profile. And so you will know your sites if your if your monitoring plan is using risk-based monitoring. Mm -hmm. They'll tell you what your site's risk profile is, and then what the strategy is for that site. So and it might be very different than another site you have. So if their profile is like five percent, you're you know you've got a little less work to do versus somebody's maybe a fifteen percent risk. Yeah. Or flip the numbers around. So you might get less S D V, you know, at one site. Yeah. But maybe focus more on like S D R type okay. stuff. Or maybe another site there they tend to have more deviations than most. Uh, so you'll do more S D R, less S D V. Okay. Whatever the, the strategy is, like it, sometimes you have a university with a key opinion leader, yeah. high enroller, low enroller, different strategies for risk-based, which is going to be the future of monitoring, I think, because we, we get to the point where like the whole SDV, SDR thing, um, you know, this is like what a monitors get paid to do, yeah. and then with that you also have regulatory and um, IP. Right. I mean, that's really it. There's not much else that monitors do. But this SDV, we're getting to the point where artificial intelligence can almost do it. We're not there yet, even for something that simple. Yeah. But we're almost there. Okay. SDR, we're nowhere near. I mean, to know whether a site's being compliant with the protocol. Yeah. When it's a complex protocol. I mean, the finding you found. Yeah. You know? No AI is going to find that. That's true. At okay. least not now yeah. with the technology we have, right? Okay. And that wasn't part of medical history. Right? I mean, I don't know the, the specifics about that, but okay. if they put that in medical history yeah, and the monitor saw that, that means they missed the deviation. Like right. a really bad one, too, because it's IE criteria deviation. IE criteria deviations are really bad. Okay. Because that means you're randomizing subjects that, that don't should belong. Be randomized, right? Yeah. It could be safety concerns. Again, they could have got a waiver. Right. Okay. That's the only thing that could happen. Or they get that record later, like after the fact, mm -hmm. when they randomized the subject already. Yeah. 
and then maybe they get a waiver that way. So if you got the record and it did show it, you would just still have to go... You have to take the patient's word for it. Right. At that point. It's like, I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Recall. Or uh, a number of things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so IE right here is like the, the worst kind of um, <laughs> deviation. Because it directly affects the patient's safety. Patient safety. safety. Yeah. But again, it's very common where... You know, you take the patient's word for it, you randomize them, yeah. and then like you're getting the records later, yeah. and you see something that's exclusionary, well, it's too late now. Right. They're on the product. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, an, like maybe an unethical site would just shred those records. We sure. never received it. Yeah. Um, or you could put it in and say this is what it is. Yeah. We're going to obviously need a waiver, or you tell us whether the patients should withdraw. Okay. And that's probably what happened in this situation. Okay, so next was subject status. So you have an enrollment log, and to confirm the log is up to date, you'll see who's in um, the system and compare that to the enrollment log, correct? Correct. And all, so the EDC, the IWRS, yeah. which a uh, big vendor is called Veracity. Okay. Right? We can ask Monica which IWRSs they use here. Um, and tomorrow when you do the site selection visit with us, there yeah. I don't know anything about that study, by the way. Okay. I don't know any literally anything. All right. Like Chris, I think, knows. But I've, I've done so many of those that it's like it's I know what they're going to ask. Okay. Uh, but they're probably going to discuss, or we can maybe even ask, what's the IWRS system? Okay. That they're using so that's one another way like to check um, enrollment status. Just compare that to what's in there. Okay. And then you screen fail patients in IWRST. Gotcha. Like so that's that's that. where you officially enroll, screen, or withdraw somebody. And that was the question. The like I think what is is it? Um, is there be a screen fail log or just an enrollment log generally? Just an enrollment log, and okay. on that enrollment log it will say status. Screen failed. Mm -hmm. or not. Okay. Status subject status. And um, as they complete or withdraw or lost the follow-up or screen fail, the log should get updated. So why do we run? Because that's the three. That's the four things, right? It's screen. Yeah. And then it's either screen fail uh, or randomized. Like it's only one of those two, right? Like at this point, if they screen and then you never hear from them again, it's not considered a lost the follow-up. Well, it technically is, but it's still a screen failure, right? But like, let's say they're randomized now, okay? Now, they can be a loss to follow up, meaning you never hear from them again. Right. Um, early term or completed visit. Okay. That's the only options once they're randomized, right? And then the process for a loss to follow up is three phone call, certified letter, Yeah. you need the IP back, right? That's like yeah. the most important thing. The site needs the IP you back. back. Right, if you get it back. Yeah, and if you can get a hold of the subject, convince them to do an early term visit, just for safety assessments. So how would you say? Safety and efficacy, but they can say no, and they're allowed to, but you as the site are supposed to encourage them to do this. So you just got to phrase that in a... Benefits of the patient. Hey, the reason we do this is because da yeah. da da da. We we're running safety and uh, final safety and efficacy, and we're going to give you a copy of your lab results to take to your doctor. Okay. Uh, but sometimes they they don't really care, and or they just won't answer. Okay. And three phone calls documented. Yep. And a certified letter. Same thing we do in healthcare. Okay. Really? Yep. Okay. Every three times. Yeah. Three okay. times. Yeah. And you guys send certified mail? Uh, yes. We, what we'll do, because, is we'll send a letter, and then uh, we'll just um, stamp it. Like, we'll just day stamp, and then copy that. So, whatever, oh, okay. yeah, but similar idea. Same thing. Yeah. yeah. These are the, that's the only possible status, right? Okay. And this visit, early term visit, and completion visit is the same visit. Okay. Like, let's say screenings visit one. Uh, let's say screenings visit one, randomizations visit two, and then you have all the visits and the completion visit, let's say it's visit ten. Okay. Now you randomize here and a patient completes all the visits and then completes the study. Okay. Or a patient 
tells you at visit four, I don't want to do this anymore, or the PI says, I don't think you should do this anymore, or the sponsor says, this patient shouldn't be in anymore. Yeah. They encourage an early term visit. Okay. Which becomes the same thing. Okay. It's the same exact set of assessments. It's just called a different thing based on the situation. Okay. Early term. Early term. Completion. Okay. Yeah. But it's the same exact visit. Okay. Um, understand. So why have the log? I mean, why have a screen fill log if you've got the system has that? Screen, why? Screening log? Uh, that's for the reg binder. That's but why, why even have it if it's actually in the system, I guess? Why? I think for redundancy. All right, that's kind of what I was thinking, too. Yeah, and for some reason, it's like a considered a regulatory document. Okay. Um, there's a lot of redundancy, I guess. Like, there's... You know, like with IP, right? You yeah. have the subject IP log. You have the master log. Yeah. You technically don't need a master log because you have the individual, but it makes it easier. Okay. And I think it makes it easier, like the having a screening log, if an auditor were to come in. Just kind of Because remember, the auditor may not have access to the the systems. Like the oh, FDA auditor okay. is not going to have EDC access or IWRS access, they just come in and look at the files, like okay. source and uh, and reg. And if your site's using eSource, like yeah. we are, I'm about to show you eSource uh, after this. Okay. Um, you have to give them access to the eSource. I gotcha. Okay. So I think that's one of the reasons, too, okay. like for auditors. Um, protocol. So protocol adherence, you're going to know the protocol, you'll know which one they're on, you'll see a copy of that in the binder and sign off as well. Yes. Yeah, okay. The different versions of the protocol. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. But the one I looked at only had one protocol. One amendment? Yeah. That's a good study. Yeah. That's a good study. Usually it's like three or four on average. I'm trying to find the actual source for that. Okay. Because it's in our book. It's in the rough draft of it, and I, I even highlighted find, find reference. Okay. So the guy was helping us. So protocol deviations, they, the site's going to report the deviation. If not, you're going to look for adverse events that could be on the source document that could become a protocol deviation that they're not aware of. Correct. 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 Okay. Just right. like you found it. Right there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, that could have been a new diagnosis, right? Or well, that not? was three years or two years before the study, so uh, but maybe they got the report in later. I think they got the report late and they still put it in. Okay. okay. Um, CRF review source data verification. So typically, can you get the source docs ahead of time before going there to see if it's got what's needed? No. Okay. Unless... <laughs> No. Okay. Unless it's a uh, remote monitoring, where they're constantly scanning and yeah. uploading their source, or if it's something like what well, we have now, eSource, but it's so new at our site, we can give access to our monitors. If they were to ask for it now, we would give it. To them. Okay. Um, I think it's just so new they haven't started asking for that. Okay. But we could. Okay. We could and. Um, then the site has to create like a SOP for how often or how uh, when does this access expire? Like where I monitor yeah. at a university, um, they give me access to their e-regulatory. Okay. They use paper source, but they use e-regs okay. and electronic IP accountability stuff. Like That's all cool. their drug stuff is electronic. They only give me access like for the day I'm there. Okay. Yeah, I, I could request up to a week. They'll they'll sometimes give me okay. up to a week, and then if you need it again, it, it will expire. It's their policy. Yeah. And they have to re you request it again. And that's actually something I have to do with our site since we just switched to uh, eSource. Okay. I have to revise our SOP um, to put a policy for. You know, when do we give CRAs access? I mean, it's a good question you asked. Okay. When, like, do we just give them eSource access whenever they ask? Right. What's the policy request that? Yeah. Or how's that going to work? Yeah. And, okay. So I'm thinking, of, I don't know what would be a good policy. Um, something that would obviously benefit the site. Okay. Would it be you get access on the day you're here for up to a week? Maybe I'll just copy like the university. Or it could be like, hey, you get it for two days ahead. Well, I guess 
Maybe two days ahead, maybe make the monitoring visit shorter if they have access to the source. I mean, technically, they don't even have to come in if it's all electronic. Right. They would still come because our e-reg is not electronic, our informed consent is not electronic. So they would still have to come physically look at that. Right. The IP is obviously, like, physical. Yeah. The logs are paper logs for the IP. So there's still reasons to come. But okay. we'll get to the point where there's not. Yeah. Like when it's all electronic? Or it's a very short time frame and you're in and out. Well, get this. I'm working with a sponsor on a... I don't even have the project yet. Um, they're doing a virtual trial. And they're the sponsor and the site. So their subjects are not even coming to the uh, any clinic. It's all done virtually. It's a simple study. It's observational. Okay. And all they're doing is following, like, outcomes of people with a certain IP that they already have prescribed. Interesting. They're, they're just following them at, at intervals. Okay. Right? So they're asking them questions, how do you feel? Um, if they need blood draws, they send a nurse there. But I, I wow. think the study doesn't even have that. Okay. So they're already doing sightless trials. They call them sightless. Hmm. And then they have, the sponsor has their internal monitors. They do all the stuff we're talking about, but it's just, it's all virtual. So for the... But most studies you can't do that. This is a simple study. All right. Like the phase fours and the simple observational studies, you can do this. Okay. The, the technology is already there. Well, there's one for a, a fasting um, research study they're doing, but they have you download the app, and the app walks through the whole research project. You yeah, just, yeah, which is pretty cool. We gotta, I gotta look into that. Okay. So if you're fasting, like for any period of time, you can. There, I'll have to get the, I'll show the app, but basically, you, um, it's a based out of Colorado, and it's a clinic has done this fasting research, mm -hmm. and then what they do is you just you do the consent process all through the app, mm -hmm. and then you just take pictures or you input exactly what you're yeah. consuming. And they monitor that. And Interesting. They, yeah. I'm going to join that study. Okay. Um, there was another study. That this was this isn't that new stuff either. This was like uh, 2015. Okay. Um, Apple, uh, for the iPhone, yeah. um, released something called Trial Kit, okay. where people can design trials through apps. Really? And again, it's simple stuff. Like this was a Parkinson's study. Okay. Where obviously if you had Parkinson's, you join. And yeah. you can do everything through your app. Or, if you didn't have Parkinson's, you, you, you're you the control group, and you can join if you wanted to. Perfect. So I actually joined. Oh, that's cool. I did a podcast where I joined it, like, live on yeah. the air. Yeah, And the consent, everything was there. Even the assessments, like, they had different motor skill tests yeah. you can do you with can. your hands and memory tests that's great, on the man. phone. It's crazy. Yeah. And you know what? They can enroll, like, hundreds of thousands of people. It's a lot of data pretty quickly. Yes. Okay. Okay. But again, the simple studies. Like right. the stuff you're looking at, that wouldn't work. Or the stuff you looked at with Chris, yeah. Or pretty much any of the studies we have here, wouldn't work. Not yet. Not yet, because the so don't those sponsors are getting access to those patients because it's their own drug that's being prescribed. Right. And there's a way. I don't know the specifics, but there's a loophole where they can actually see if it's a device or a. I, or a biologic, okay. you can get access to prescriber information. Okay. And then you're basically just calling patients. Well, when you, saying, prescribe, hey, you, know, well, when you prescribe medication, that's like all goods reported to a database. So they all know. There you go. When it's, um, like so the, they're probably using that database to reverse engineer for studies. Right. And they're cold calling these people and saying, hey, we're actually, <laughs> we're actually the, the, the ones who made this, this medication you're yeah. taking. Uh, we have an observational study. Yeah. Here's what a clinical trial is. And, you know, they have yeah. to go down that rabbit hole, but yeah. they have access to the patients. They can do it. Another example is there's a lot of these bloggers, like as I'm doing a video right now, you know, like I understand this world, but there's like patient bloggers, patients with arthritis. There's a guy with migraines. Yeah. He has like 300,000 subscribers, all people with migraines. Yes. Like daily, like they visit on a daily basis. That means they're like constantly doing They're migraines. actively engaged in the community. Right, yeah. Right. He's got this platform. He built it because yeah. he has migraines too. And I mean, if you're a sponsor with a migraine study, mm -hmm. you get all your patients from him. 
Well, for example, our, as I told you, our youngest is a type 1 diabetic. There are um, type 1 diabetic communities, and they're being sponsored by vendors like Dexcom or Honeypod. They're, they are actively engaging in research, so they're out there engaging in that community for yeah. research volunteers. Eli Lilly's doing a lot of yeah. that, too. Yeah. So, That's mm -hmm. the, and they know it. I mean, they're not doing it out of the goodness of their heart. No. They want access to the patients, for the this, data. probably for the trials, yeah. to make faster trials, yeah. cheaper trials. If you reduce the sites, eliminate the sites, I mean, you have cheap trials. You'll, you'll still need CRAs. Right. They're but still cheap. doing the same thing, but you can keep them all in-house. Right. Could but again, it's, these are simple studies, not complex. Okay. Um, interview completed. So data entry been completed with specified timelines? So every two hours? No, no, every, CR, every sponsor has different requirements. Okay. And every site has its own SOPs. Okay. So that's vague on purpose. It's either the site's SOP or the sponsor timeline, whichever is sooner. And okay. you should know that as CRA, but that's on a study by study basis. Okay, gotcha. Usually it's 24 to 48 hours. Sometimes it's up to 72 hours. Okay. And sometimes it's like two business days or three business days instead of hours. So adverse events reporting, obviously you're going to look at the um, adverse event log and yes. then if you see something, make sure it's just it's, it's on that log. So usually what happens is the inverse of that. It's You'll see something as a monitor in yeah. the progress note. Just like you saw that, yeah. you know, but it's not on any log. Okay. And it's not even in the ADC because they missed it. Okay. So that's you flag. Well, that's it. you're going to see more of that. Yeah, you put a sticky on it. Yeah. You know, on the actual source, and then you query it in the EDC for that for the AE section. Say, hey, um, please enter. Source shows AE of yeah whatever it is, and then that will also be your action items that go on your report. I guess my I'm thinking right now because depending on how much time you have, I mean, there's a lot of moving parts, you know, and I'm like I guess you start with the ICF, you start with the inclusion, inclusion, you just kind of go from there with Tommy God. It's the, yeah, exactly. Okay. And then you can see how it gets stressful quickly. Sure. Because this is one site, then maybe like you said, you get reports coming in, in the meantime. Yeah. Maybe the next day you're traveling. Yeah. And then you have another site visit the following day, so you could finalize your report the next day. Yeah. Go to your next site visit now. Now your lead CRA will have your report, they'll yeah. have comments back and forth while you're monitoring another site. Okay. Then you make those revisions, then the sponsor asks you questions, and now you've done two more visits. Okay. And with the same thing going on with the other So you got to be on your shit all the time. I mean, yeah. yeah. Ask your friend. I mean, he's, he's probably to the point where, um, like, your first year of CRA and your second year, you're, like, working like crazy. Okay. Because you're junior. You're junior CRA. Yeah. And... Every CRO says they care about turnover. They don't care, dude. Come on, let's be honest. Not at that level. They do care at the senior level. Okay. They don't want to lose a senior because you don't need to train them. Okay. Like, the junior ones, you still require some training. Right. So if you lose them, it's not that bad. Um, but the senior ones, they don't want to lose, so they give them less of a workload. Okay. Eventually, they become lead CRAs where they don't even travel. Okay. They just stay and, and review your reports. Right. Right? They're the ones asking you for revisions before they present it to the sponsor. Okay, gotcha. Because they can't present your original report to the sponsor without them looking at it first. Makes sense. So right. it's going to take you a year, two years to get to what you're doing, really? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Because if you were to do that, the sponsor would say, why, are, why is your lead CRA not seeing yeah. this? Is this being recorded? Yeah. Okay, I, won't, I had a comment, but I won't say you it You right can now. say it. I'll edit it out. Um... Yeah, no, we'll talk later. Okay, <laughs> um, okay that covers that topic. <coughs> Staff and facilities to fulfill obligations. It's so generic. On purpose. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. It's an objective measurement. I mean, it's well, subjective measurement, honestly. PA responsibilities is GCP, right? Yeah. Like, follow GCP. It's very big, but there's guidelines, and they have to be within that. Okay. And then also following the protocols. The it's part of GCP. One of the thirteen pillars of GCP is protocol should not be deviated. From. Period. 
So right. technically, you could put no on that any time. I was going to say, is that really? You shouldn't, because they, as, what they mean by that is maintaining oversight. So, for example, like on one of the binders, like the comment log wasn't signed off on when they finished the study. And yeah. So, how, on a priority, like how important is that stuff at the end, at the end um, of the study? It's important, but not, it's, it doesn't affect patient safety. Okay. So, you just got to keep that in mind as you're It's fine. just the action item. Okay. That would just be an action item. And that's something that could be done um, during your visit. Like if you found that it's like let's say a closeout visit, yeah, and a con med log for a patient that completed it wasn't signed off on, you know you can just have that paper with you, and when you meet with the PI, give them that paper and have them do that. And say hey, I noticed this wasn't signed, and then in your report you could put CRA observed the con med log wasn't signed. See okay. when CRA met with the PI, then it makes you look good. Okay. When CRA met with the PI, um, he. Had them sign yeah. off, okay. Because yeah. those PI meetings, there's not a lot of time. You don't need a lot from them, do you, honestly? Like five to ten minutes. Okay, if so there's like issues, you need longer. But yeah. You, I mean, if there's issues, you need longer. Or if, there are, if you're conducting a training on a new amendment, yeah, you'll need 20 minutes. Now, when there's staff changes, you're going to see... So let's say they don't add a staff member, but you're going to see maybe them on the log, a delegation of duties log, like, hey, I don't see... Um, like I don't see them on the law, but I see that there's a their signature here, yeah. or vice versa, right? Right, and then you got to ask who um, is this person? Who is this person? What, are they supposed to be doing this? Right. And if the PI or coordinator tells you, yeah, we just never put them on the log yet, we forgot. Okay. Then you that's a finding, it's an action item. Um, they're gonna have to not back date, but the the start date on the delegation log will be whatever date they started, yeah, and then they initial and date late entry, today's date. Okay. Like okay. one of the logs I saw, there was a change, they crossed through, but they didn't put the data, the change on there. Yeah, see? So okay. That would be like an action item. Okay, That's gotcha. not a, de those kind of things are not deviations. Okay. Um, it's not a of a, change, it's just... That'd be more of a GCP violation, but it's not really a violation either, it's just something that wasn't done yet. Okay. And then if, I think Sinead said at one point, and maybe I'm, I'm incorrect here, that any time there's a staff change depending on the site or the protocol, you need to have every person listed on the 1572, or was that you mentioned that? So the 1572, the box 6, or is for sub-investigators. So it's only sub eyes that change or PIs that change? Those are the ones that have to sign a financial disclosure form. Right. 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 Delegation log has everybody at the site. Okay. Down to the MAs, down to the patient recruiter. Right. Everybody. Not all those people are sub -wise. Right. Now, sponsors are requiring a lot of study coordinators to be put in that box now. Okay, that's what I maybe I heard then. Okay. Yes. But uh, you'd have to find out from that sponsor. Is the so coordinator considered it. a sub buyer or not? Okay. You know, in my opinion, they should be because they're the ones doing all the work. It would make sense. And it makes sense from a financial disclosure perspective. Because they're heavily involved in the study. Okay. I mean, you're the coordinator, you're essentially controlling the study at your yeah. site, Yeah. and then you can own, like, a bunch of stock <laughs> in the drug company and right. manipulate the results, at least on your end, to okay. make it look good, right? So, yeah. it makes sense why they would want them as a... Okay. Even though those things don't work when they try to change... The, I mean, you'll get caught. That's you fraud. Think, yeah. That's fraud. And now you're messing with the SEC also. Why is SEC involved with that? Well, if you are um, oh, they, owning stock, I and, gotcha. yeah, it's like inside. It actually, this happened um, a couple years back here in the Riverside. Two two PIs. Yeah. Um, they owned stock in a company that they were doing a study for. Okay. Okay. They put the on the on the financial disclosure form. Yes. Yeah. So everybody knew. Right. They knew, because they saw it in their patients, the drug was not effective, okay. and they had a feeling sponsor would cancel the study, so they sold their shares before oh. investors were able to. Wow. They got it caught. They lost their I think they got fined. Okay. I don't know if they had jail time, but they lost, they got it, like black marks on their license, banned oh, from man. research. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. So they should have hypothetically just left it alone and just done nothing about that and just let it ride. I guess technically just don't. Buy the stocks. 
right. than the first one. Before you go into it. Yeah, and it, I I don't see how. Like, if you were an investor, how could you not want to protect your investment? And if you're the PI, obviously you're seeing that it's not working. Yeah. You're out. So yeah. I think it's best to not even have that stock in the first place. Okay. Now, the financial disclosure also is, are you receiving money from drug company, like speaking fees yeah. in excess of a certain amount? or um, any family members work for the sponsor company. Okay. Those are also part of the FDA. If everyone just thinks it's stocks, but it's other it's, things too. Okay, gotcha. All right. Um, I guess we went through that. We went through 60 aspects. Let's see. IP product, so we discussed the log. We'll just let me in the IP room. You'll see the log in there. For the temperature log, sorry. Temple up. Yeah, Temple up. Min max. Yeah. Um, you have to ask if they're continuously monitoring the I said they would be, wouldn't they? Temperature. Um, yes. So there's either min max. Right. Right? For the day. Yeah. So you just check at a, whenever you do what was the minimum, what's the maximum right. at that time I'm checking. Yeah. That's technically not continuous because you could have done the min max and then an hour later it's different min and different max on the same day. Continuous is just constantly recording okay. and it will actually notify the site when an excursion is is taking place as so opposed to what min max. Here we don't do continuous, we're going to. Um, we do just min max. Okay. But they allow that too. for the study you guys are doing. Yeah. Okay. And it um, it actually notifies you um, through an alarm if it's excursion, but continuous is better. Okay. And and, and continuous, you just take the. Um, yes, I have right. one here. It just it caused a lot of problems because it wasn't working properly, but um, it's like a thermometer, and then you plug it into the USB. Yep. And it prints out the. Super easy. Okay. The temperature. Um, Store it properly. Walk reviewed has IP been dispensed in that history. So as far as IP dispensing, you'll know the protocol and you'll know it's been dispensed accordingly from what you're seeing and the the patient charts. Yes. Yeah. Like once a day or once orally or once sublingually or whatever. Mm -hmm. okay. Depending on the protocol and um, you're making sure the site's compliant with that. IP uh, IP supply is that just more of a visual? You're like how many they are rolling? Are we have enough for the next enrollment coming up? Yes. Same with kits. Same with the inventory for lab kits. Yeah. And remember, with kits, it's the added IP expires too. They have expiration yeah. dates. But kits also have expiration dates. They do. That's right. I keep forgetting. We usually have those are. Yeah, and um, it's happened a few times where staff use an expired lab kit, and that data is not valid. Well, the reason why I, I was reading the study last night with Crit uh, um, on Amgen, and the result was sent off, but I guess there was an issue when it got spun. It wasn't spun enough, mm -hmm. and the results were invalid. But I didn't see a follow-up done on that one. It should be. Okay. Unless the patient was lost, lost the follow-up. Okay. Or I just didn't see it in there, but that's what. Or they be. came in for the early term and refused the lab assessments. Okay. Which they can do. Too. Okay. They can say, no, I don't want the lab. Uh, you guys poke me too much. I'm, I don't want that anymore. Okay. We've had that happen to you. Have you really? Yeah, I mean, okay. some people are have difficult pains. Sure. And so they just get frustrated, especially when you're dealing with, sch with schizophrenics. Oh, that's right. So they don't want to keep getting poked, and they're like, you know what? I don't want the labs. Okay. And But if it's early term, it's fine. Yeah. If it's for the study... The best thing you can do if the protocol allows is have them come in another day and do it, okay. as long as it's within window. Yeah. But if they refuse, then you have to withdraw them. Okay. Because that's they're not being compliant with the right. protocol at that point. Breaking code? In the ah, breaking the blind. Yes, there was that question, but also is there a break in the code? I'm like, okay, with the IP product. Uh, that's the same thing. Okay. It's the randomization code. They call it breaking the code. Mm -hmm. Um, like, let's say a patient, because um, most SAEs happen outside of the of clinic. Right? <laughs> like, it's outpatient. Right. Um, if it's inpatient, it's easier. You can control it there. But if it's outpatient, you as the site won't get notified until after the SAE happened. 
Okay. And then it's usually like somebody from the ER, somehow they found out the patient's in a study. Yeah. Maybe they told them, so they call, and then they, the, the treating physician there wants to know what they've been taking. And yeah. The staff say, I don't know, it's double blind. Yeah. Right? So they break the blind. Only the PI can break the blind. And it's a sealed envelope. And so, so you got to check that it's sealed every time you come. So ER calls, do you need a written release before you can do that? Uh, they should send, yeah, they should send something. But you can break the blind any time. But you got to get all the PI. The PI's going to do that part The of PI it. has to do it. He's the have... only one with the code for the IWRS. Okay. And so when he breaks that envelope, it's sealed. When he breaks it, it gives instructions what website to go or what number to call. Okay. Multiple options. Okay. How to break the blind. We've never done it. Okay. In 13 years. Oh, wow. Never. Okay. Yeah. Is that Usually... We've had patients hospitalized with SAEs. That was my question, yeah. But the ERs don't know that they're in a study. It doesn't come up. Or it's it doesn't come up till the patient's next visit. Okay. Where they say, hey, I was hospitalized um, two weeks ago. Okay. But I'm out now. I'm better. Okay. Well, now you have an SAE on your hand. Oh, man. And now you got to find out, okay, well, when did you stop taking the IP? Yeah. And, okay, now you got to look at this. That, is that compliant with the protocol? No. Well, now i got to call medical monitor to see if they'll allow the patient. This is what happened. All of this has to be documented. Okay. But it's still SAE. Yeah. Now the question is, can they continue or not? Okay. And so it's, it's a lot of stuff. Even for, uh, that's all coordinators doing all that, too. Okay. So your amount of work has just gone up a lot more. Yeah. So typically what happens is they get hospitalized and nobody knows they're in a study. Okay. And they just stabilize them and get them out. Right. Okay. Um, but that's the reason for the breaking the blind. I wasn't sure like how that like break, uh, the emergency code break. I was like, is that? I wasn't sure what that terminology meant. But now yeah. I got it. Yep. And inpatient, like if if you have inpatient studies, um, I mean SAEs can happen in the while they're in the inpatient unit. Okay. You know, then you'll know. The science. Supply, or file. We had a, actually a scary case once. What happened? I was not, this was when I first started in research. I was just a coordinator, like, actually wasn't even a coordinator, I was an assistant. Okay. And I wasn't an owner yet, I was just interning. Yeah. And we had an inpatient study, and we took, the coordinator took, um, it was the run in period. Okay. So, what that means is, it's an inpatient study for schizophrenia. Okay. The patient, we had our own like wing for inpatient. We had a hospital of nurses there. Okay. So the nurses, um, we had the, only we knew it was placebo, not the patient. Okay. okay. Placebo blind. Placebo blind run-in, meaning okay. you wash them off their meds at, uh, after screening, and then when, before you technically randomize them to a treatment, yeah. you give them a placebo run-in for seven days. Okay. Right. Yeah. So they think they're getting something. Yep. They know that there's a possibility that they may not. Right. But it's like because it's double blind, they're allowed to do that okay. blinded run in. Yeah. Okay. And then you're supposed to randomize. Okay. Right. So you know for as the site that they're getting placebo that first right. seven days. Yeah. So we took the patient with the meds. Yeah. To the nurse. Okay. We told the nurse, here's the dosing instructions. We didn't tell them it's placebo either. Okay. Here's the dosing instructions, you know, because that's hospital policy. They have to administer it. Fine. And the nurse said, okay. So what the nurse did, just gave the patient the blister packs because they didn't know how to handle, like, a study. Um, <laughs> and the patient was psychotic, took all of them. Holy crap. <laughs> took all of them. The psychiatrist called the site us. Yeah, yeah. It was like, hey, this guy took all the meds. What is the... what?" It, what kind of medications is this? They took all of it. We're worried about like overdose right, right. now, but he's having no symptoms. <laughs> <laughs> and then we said, oh, it's placebo. Okay. Um, obviously, if that would have been the real IP or like truly double blind where you we didn't, didn't know. know. Yeah. And the nurses just gave them the, the med. Like without, that's, you could get into issues with uh, inpatient studies. So if they like gave them, time. if they gave them, if they took all the meds, then you got to call the medical monitor and say, "Okay, what do we do next?" 
let's say you're in week one, the patient took all of them at one night on the first day instead of taking one a day. And they're in the outpatient or in outpatient. Outpatient. Yeah. So you gave the patient the bottle. Yeah. And for whatever reason, the patient, patient just took, took all of it. Yeah. Yeah. It depends what would happen. If nothing happened, it's okay. not an SAE, but it's a major deviation. Okay. Patient would have to be withdrawn because okay. they're. Um, if something happened, then it's SAE and okay. the stuff I just said. Okay.